Great. And we're live on YouTube now. Okay, super. Good job, guys. Hey, Murph, you are live and in color on YouTube. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you today, or sort of see you. This is Trinity Sunday, and we gather today to celebrate God as creator of the world and of each of us. God as redeemer, repairer, if you like, of the world, and God as enabler. It's good to worship together. And uh, just going to take a minute to ask the wardens to give a word of welcome. Hello everyone, I'm Leanne Thompson and I'm the Deputy Rector's Warden at St. Matthew's Church in Islington. I want to welcome everyone, our family and friends, to those on video and connecting over the phone, to those who are watching us live on YouTube or seeing us later recorded. Thank you so much for joining us here. We are a warm and welcoming community and we are thrilled to share Jesus' love with you today. Feel free to participate in as much of the service as you feel comfortable. After our worship, we have a virtual coffee hour, so you can stay and take a few minutes for those who are part of the Zoom meeting to chat together. We hope you'll consider connecting with us through our ministry offered during the week. A few points of order, as always, you will be muted during worship with only the leaders of the different parts of the service who will be unmuted. Uh, a reminder that our video feed will only show the speakers uh, um, at the time, but just be aware of uh, if you are on video at any point that things behind you or beside you can be seen. So please join our service today. Our voice of the people will be Ron and Barb Landry for the congregational responses in the liturgy. Welcome. Let's join together in the Trinity greeting. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. O oh, come, let us worship. We sing with Tyler leading us, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, a great hymn of the church.
reading from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let anyone with ears to hear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The appointed psalm this morning is Psalm 8. We will say it responsively by whole verse. So you say the whole verses. Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Blessed are you, creator of heaven and earth. Amid the immensity of the universe, you are mindful of us and seek us out. Blessed are you for your son, who humbled himself to share our life, that we might be returned to him with him in glory and splendor. Blessed be your holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right, we have a little bit of a problem here. Okay, I can only see the words partially here. Um, maybe someone, maybe uh, Barb and Ron could do the reading. If, cause, can you see it, Barb and Ron, if Murph can? Yes, yes, we can. Would, would that be okay, Murph? Yeah, I, all I can see is pictures on top of it. So, all right, you. let's go ahead, um, Barb and Ron. Okay. Now the 11 the disciples, disciples went, went to Galilee, Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Sorry for that little glitch. I'm still learning the Zoom business. 
In fact, that's one of the hard things I think about this season of the pandemic. The isolation we feel from friends and family and certainly the difficulty we experience in such a thing as a Zoom service. It's a good example. Celebrations in our family almost always involve a shared meal. In busy lives, even this is increasingly difficult. And now the pandemic has made it pretty well impossible. For Don and me, it's true that unless everyone is together at our table, it just isn't the full family anymore. It always seems incomplete. This is Trinity Sunday. And the one way to appreciate it that I find helpful is as a celebration of the fullness of God. The whole family of God is at the table now. And we're all invited to enter more deeply into that community fullness. Trinity arrives after Pentecost in the church year. It's as if all the members of the family of God are now introduced and accounted for. The Father and Creator, the Son who revealed the nature of God in terms we could humanly understand, and the Holy Spirit who brings the Word into our lives and empowers us in the here and now. All are present. With Stephen having left for other responsibilities, we're experiencing a gap right now at St. Matthew. That Trinity Sunday has come on a Sunday after Stephen has left and left me, I might add, with the Trinity sermon. We have to face up to the gap on our own table today. But we should not let our feeling of loss deflect our thinking about our experience of God and the festival of the Holy Trinity. The biblical evidence for the threefold reality of God is actually very strong. The most obvious moment when the fullness of the Godhead was present was at Jesus' baptism, when Jesus was blessed by the Spirit and God's voice was heard by those present. This is my son, he said. Toward the end of my formal working life, I worked for a decade in a theological college preparing students for ordained leadership ministry. Most of my colleagues spent their professional academic lives uh, in books and ideas, attempting to express doctrines and theological concepts in what they believed were readily understandable ways. However, I have to say, I spent the majority of my ministry in the rather messy and cl less clear life of the church. Tidy theories and proofs very rarely satisfied me or my understanding of the real church as I had experienced this. Maybe you're like me in this, or perhaps you're someone who finds the search for the right description of the Trinity intriguing and intellectually challenging. Or you have doubts like some of Jesus' followers. Whoever you are and whatever your inclination it's okay. It doesn't matter that we're different. Jesus' commission to make disciples is still meant for each of us. I just want to point out that when I took this slide from the, the sort of common room at Wycliffe, I realized that right in the front, front, you will recognize a green hat. And I'm pretty sure that's Seth. He always wore a hat. And we should remember to pray for Seth, who's now leading a community in Banff, Alberta. This is actually the only Sunday in the church year that focuses exclusively on a doctrine of the church. And I have to say, it's a pretty complicated one. After all, the church did not come easily to the Trinitarian formula that we now take for granted. It took the great theologian, Augustine, 15 volumes to describe it, which is slightly more than I have time to do this morning. The formula didn't actually firm up until the late 300s in the church's year. In the great councils of Nicaea in 325 and Constantinople in 381, 
perhaps that's always how it is when we try to give words or definition to the mystery of God. I'm convinced that much of our logic and understanding ultimately falls short. I mean, shouldn't we expect that when we try to find human language to describe God, it's difficult. So we hold on to the Trinity as a guiding principle. I wonder if you could remember learning to eat with chopsticks. I couldn't find a picture of peas, but it's trying to pick up peas with a chopstick that was the test I had to pass. The final test, if you like, of competency was whether you could successfully eat a pea. Isn't that right? Can't you remember that? If you squeeze the pea too hard, it will be crushed and fall from your grasp. If you hold the pea too lightly, it will slip off the chopsticks. Either way, you will lose the pea and may lose any chance of nourishment it might have given you. To be successful with chopsticks, you need to learn just how to hold the pea on the way to your mouth. Not too lightly, but not too rigidly either. I believe the Trinity is just like that. The key is holding the doctrine firmly enough to be nourished, but not so tightly that it becomes crushed and no longer nutritious. I take comfort in today's text. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain on which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Even after all that had happened, Jesus' resurrection and the dramatic events of the day of Pentecost, some still doubted. They just couldn't grasp the fullness of what God had done already and would do till the end of the age. You see, we don't need to know everything about God to know what Jesus asks of us. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. God's commission of us does not rely on our having understood all of it. We are just to be obedient to what we've been asked to do. I love how Anne Lamott puts it. I didn't need to understand the mystery of the Trinity, she says. I just needed to turn my life over to whoever came up with redwood trees. St. So Matthew's conclusion to the gospel records Jesus saying to us, just get on with it. God wants to fix the world, so just get on with it. Recent world events make it painfully clear, and some pretty close to home, just how much the world needs repair. Jesus makes it clear that that is part of our responsibility as Christians. And so the sum of my message to you this morning is to ask you to embrace the mystery of the Trinity. Oh, you can continue to try to figure it out, but don't leave hold of it. Embrace the mystery in order to shelve any doubts and begin to do what Jesus asks of his followers. Amen. Now may the wonder of the love of God be your home. May the richness of the grace of Christ be your freedom. And may the fullness of the community of the Holy Spirit be your power. Amen. In response to God's word, I invite you to confess your faith, shared faith, with, uh, with all of us as we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we turn to our offertory. I just want to thank you all for your financial involvement in the life of the parish. As most of you know, by experience, a plant like this takes money to run and it doesn't go away just because of the pandemic. So thank you all for your continued generous support and especially throughout these challenging times. I just want to tell you too that we receive gifts now through pre-authorized giving envelopes and now e-transfer donations and you will see on the screen the, uh, the location of that site. So as we sing this hymn, we give thanks for all of God's gifts and the generosity of the people of St. Matthew. We recall how stewardship gives us the opportunity to partner in our gospel ministries together. Now, Tyler will lead us in the offertory hymn. Good morning, everybody. This next worship song will probably be unfamiliar to a lot of you. Uh, if that's the case, then please just uh, listen and meditate on the words. Uh, but at the conclusion of this hymn, uh, we will sing, we'll conclude with uh, the doxology. So please join me for the doxology at the end of this, I believe. Resurrection 
that we will rise again, for by belief in the name of Jesus, for I believe in the name of Jesus, for I believe in the name of Jesus, I believe in life eternal, I believe in the virgin birth, I believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three and one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Believe in the name of Jesus. God, receive all we offer you this day. Grant that hearing your word and responding to your spirit, mm -hmm. we may share in your divine life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sally is now going to lead us in the prayers of the people. Jesus Christ, we give you thanks. We humbly bring our prayers and requests to you for our families and friends, for the church, and for all of the world's peoples. We, we give, give you thanks. thanks. We ask your blessing on all who meet together, whether by telephone, Zoom, or YouTube, that we may all feel our blessed connection to you and to each other. May we, worshiping together, find solace and comfort, find peace and messages of hope, comfort, and peace. We give you thanks. Make us a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us bring your love. Where there is injury, your healing power. And where there is doubt, true faith in you. Make us a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let us bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. O Spirit, grant that we may never seek so much to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love with all our soul. Help us to reach out to others in this time of great uncertainty and unrest, remembering the erosion of fair and just societies around the world. Let us share with others the peace and comfort of your word. We give you thanks. We pray guidance for those in authority to bring hope, comfort, and peace to the people in the world who are suffering from fears, racial unrest, disease, and uncertainty. We give you thanks. Today we pray for the leaders and bishops of the Anglican Church, Linda, Andrew, Area Bishop Jenny, and Anne, our Metropolitan. We ask your blessing on the clergy of St. Matthews. Tom, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, 
we ask your blessing on, on the clergy of St. Matthews, Merv, Milton, and Gail, and on the staff of St. Matthews, Tom, Jeff, Kimberly, Tyler, Lori, Anita, and Lisa, and all of those who lead, guide, and develop our church family. In this week's cycle of prayer, we pray for Doug Lewis, Diana Lewis, Dennis, Marguerite, Jacqueline, and Diana Locke, and v Victor, Sue, Allison, Daniel, and Michael Logan. We offer our prayers for those who have asked for our prayers. Mary, V, Marilyn, Carlisle, Rebecca, and all of our parishioners in retirement and long-term care. We offer thanks to all who participated in Stephen's celebrations last week. We wish him and his family many blessings on their new journey. Gracious God, you always listen to our prayers. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Please grant our requests as may be best for us. Thank you for walking with us always. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, we praise you. Through your word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending to us, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. And we pray together. Our Father, Father hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against them. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Tyler will lead us now in M560, God, who's almighty word.
And now may the wonder of the love of God be your home. May the richness of the grace of Christ be your freedom. And may the fullness of the community of the Holy Spirit be your power. Amen. The uh, announcements are listed on the screen. Uh, Nancy or Deborah, are you still working on soup? Yes, we are. We continue uh, until the pandemic's over, as far as we know. And we're doing shepherd's pie this week, actually. We've stepped up to some solids for them. And we're trying to think of some summer ideas, if anybody's got any ideas of some nice summer things that we can uh, make that are light, but are easy to transport and won't spoil in the heat, then just let us know. Uh, wh when are you doing the shepherd's pie? <laughs> uh, we're doing it on this Tuesday and it gets served Wednesday. I could probably just test it on Tuesday evening. Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> I thought it was for personal gain, but I don't know. <laughs> well, perhaps on Tuesday you'll be at a 7.30 gift meeting, a chance to look at lives and text together. And uh, if you want to join that meeting, you need to call the office for a link. Wednesdays at 1 p.m., there is another Zoom event, an open discussion of Sunday's sermon. Uh, Don and I will be there, so we'll be happy to greet you and talk about the Trinity. Not for long, for an hour. That concludes our uh, service of Trinity Sunday. We will be in, going into breakout groups in our virtual coffee hour in a few moments, and uh, we'll leave that task up to Colin. Thank you all for being with us, and do stay for the coffee hour if you wish. Thank you very much. <laughs>